I'm the strongest Uruk there has ever lived. I will destroy any who cross my path. What is this foul beast? I will smash! Hey, cut, cut that out, the tickles! <laughs> hey, <laughs> seriously, I will destroy. <laughs> Last time on Amateur Hour, we completed the base for our Orc Mega Boss. In this video, we finish up this awesome model by slapping some paint on this bad boy. But before we get to that part, we have to figure out how we are going to hold the model without getting my grubby paws all over it. I will admit this is my first time attempting to drill in pin models. For those who are unfamiliar with the process, you essentially drill a small pin hole into the model, then insert a pin into the holes. Personally, I used a paperclip as a pin. Then you super glue your paperclip in place. And hopefully that should do the trick, which in my case, it worked great. Then I took the two pins I placed in the feet of the model and shoved that into some cork I had left over from the basing process. And then I discovered I could not attach this to my empty pill bottle holder, so I super glued some magnets to the cork, and it seemed to work out. Then I primed the model black, mostly because the paint I will be putting on this model will end up being darker colors. And now it's time for the intimidating process. Paint this model so it looks good. Hold up, not yet. I first took out an old Reaper Bones orc model I had laying around and tested out some paint schemes. I was a little nervous to test it out on the real deal initially. As you can see I tried out a few different ways to do the cloth present on the model. Some did not turn out that well, so I avoided those in the final piece. Alright, enough of avoiding the inevitable, onto the painting process. What really inspired me to paint this orc different than its typical green skin color scheme was a post I saw on Reddit a while back. User Dylock had this cool orc megaboss just like mine, themed like a Lord of the Rings Urukai. As a big fan of awesome looking models and Tolkien, I made a goal for myself to paint up a terrifying group of Urukai looking orcs for Age of Sigmar. So a big thank you to Dylock for making this video happen. Now onto the paint scheme. The paints I use during this process are down below, and yes, it is a mismatch of a few different paint companies. As I have no sole allegiance to any one brand, and personally I think that is a good thing. Learning what paints work best for you is a great step to improving the quality of your work. Anyways, I'm getting off track. For the skin of the auric, I went with a dark reddish brown tone. I started with a dark brown, then shaded the skin in a black wash, and finished it off with a couple highlights leaning more towards burgundy. My fear for the skin tone is that it may be drowned out by some of the other darker themes in the model, essentially making it look like this auric is hiding inside a metal turtle shell. But I wanted to try to go with a more realistic look. What I mean by realistic look is trying to think of what this Auruk has available to him in the environment he lives in, as well as how his environment has imprinted on him. With the red mesa kind of look I am going for, this tribe of Auruks may have dyes, paints, and pigments that are reflective of this landscape. Reds, oranges, browns, and maybe grays are going to be some major colors for this piece. At the end of the day I may lose out on some nice contrast with the model, with a paint scheme lacking variety. For the armor I went with a typical dirty silver metallic. Then I realized that this model is practically all armor, and doing it all one solid color can really create a dull piece. So after I painted everything in a deep iron, I tried out some red plates in a few different areas. My thought was that this would add some needed contrast to the model while keeping with the theme. After finishing up the few red plates on the model, I decided to take it a step further and have a few of the other armor plates also be painted black. I felt like this would add some more interest to the model, and make the attire of the orc more appealing to the eye. At the end, I felt pretty good about the base coat for the armor. Then I decided to tackle the next large focal point of the model, the massive skull on the orc. I went with the typical bone color for the base coat, and in later steps I would work in some shading and blending to the skull. I also decided to do the same with the other bone pieces, such as the necklace and the fingernails. I had a tough time deciding what to do with the demonic skull attached to his armor plating. For those who are unfamiliar with where the skull comes from, it is from a chaotic beast called a corn blood letter, which tend to have a red color scheme. The problem with this is, the fact that I already have multiple red plates on the model, and did not want the blood letter skull to become blended with the armor, I decided to mix up some red, gray, and bone color all together until I got the base coat I liked. I also forced myself to try out some wet blending on this skull. 
I am an extreme novice at this technique, and it took a lot of patience to achieve the look I was going for. I think it turned out well, but not as good as it could have been. To finish up the base coats on the model, I went with an off-white brown for the cloth on the auric, a good old-fashioned medium brown for the wood on the axe, and a tan for all the leather straps, both on the weapon and the wrists. After the base coats were completed, I moved on to shading various parts of the miniature. Anything that was armor got a black wash, anything that was bone or cloth got a brown wash, and the special blood letter skull got a reddish brown wash. I even went a little bit further and added some brown wash to other sections of the armor to add more interest to the piece. It took a little bit of time for all the shading to dry before I moved on to highlighting. I initially started on the black armor plates. I knew if I left them completely black they would look as I forgot to paint that section of the armor, so I went over with a dark gray to give it some needed highlights. I mainly wanted to put a large focus of my highlighting onto the armor plates themselves. I wanted the edges to pop as well as look like this orc had seen some fights. To do this I made some silver markings over the red and black sections of the armor. This portrays that arrows and swords have scraped against the armor, causing some of that paint to chip off. Over all the sharp edges of the armor, I went back over them with the original silver metallic I used. On a few of the plates, I even added some extra lines of silver to give that battle-hardened look. I personally think I could have taken more time and done better with this step, but overall I am happy with how it turned out. In addition to the metallic edge highlighting, I put spots of rust over a few sections of the armor, just to give it even more impressions that this orc has survived in this armor for quite some time. When I moved on to highlighting the bone sections, I had a tough time deciding what I wanted to do with the skull atop the orc's shoulder. I initially had the plan of creating deep brown horns at the peak of the skull, blending down to the base of the skull. But after getting halfway through painting the skull this way, I had second thoughts. I essentially flipped my initial idea. At the end I went with a more sun-bleached top of the skull, with a more dirty and worn base. And it was after the skull that I did some final highlights over the other small details of the model. It was at this point I decided to call the model complete. So I clipped down the pins and attached the orc to his rocky base. Overall I am very happy with the paint job I did. I could have taken multiple more hours on this model to try and complete every piece to perfection, Sometimes you just have to know when to call it quits on a model, or it can end up looking bad in the end. I will say I wish I took more time with blending the base connection to the auric. The left foot of the mega boss does not blend well with the rock he is standing on, and this is very distracting. Yet there was part of me that did not want to try and cover up this blemish with small stones and dirt, because I believe this also may look unrealistic. I will say I am very proud of this model. It is not professional by any means, but for my personal painting standards I set for myself, it is one of my better pieces. For those of you that stayed till the end of this painting tutorial, I want to thank you for watching, and hope you take something I did today and implement it into your own painting. Again, thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.